Hello and welcome to Hugging the Snug. I'm Gaia and today I'm joined by Ben Fletcher, the Electric Vehicle Product Manager at Renault UK. Ben, this is called Hugging the Snug, so the first thing we need to do... <laughs> that was a very lovely hug. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. So we are here today to speak about electric vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, there has been a lot of noise about the adoption of electric vehicles, particularly in um, the business model of car clubs like e car club mm -hmm. next week so if you could please tell us a bit more a bit about it okay so electric vehicles are really picking up sales and picking up steam at quite a rate especially throughout 2013 and that's fueled by a couple of things one of the big things is the number of new electric vehicles that we've got coming on the market and those include things like the Renault Zoe which is obviously quite close to my heart um, but it also includes later on this year the first offering from BMW so that really creates a lot of awareness for the public as well but eCar Club and similar schemes are great as well because it means more people actually get behind the wheel of electric vehicles and experience them firsthand and realize actually what a great proposition they are in everyday use for a lot of the population. Okay, but this will have many other questions coming afterwards. Of One course. thing is, how about charging points? So charging points, we're already in quite a good situation. So if I just take the charging points, for example, which are compatible with Zoe, there are already over two and a half thousand of those around the UK in various different networks. London is incredibly well served for charging points. I think the, the current um, the current rollout plan of charging points in, in London is going forward at quite a pace. But the other point on charging points, too many points there, but the other point there is not just how many there are, but where they are and what the capacity is. So for example, if you're going on a long motorway journey, you want a rapid charger, one that will charge the car as quickly as possible at, for example, the motorway service station. But if you're at a train station, you want easy access to a charging point but it doesn't have to be that fast because you're probably going to be leaving your car there all day so it isn't just how many there are it's about the network being intelligent and intelligently applied as well okay but let's try then to focus around london mm -hmm. because this is where, where we, we are, are. Yeah. which makes sense and okay if you say that the, the charging points are already widely spread mm -hmm. why are people so unsure about electric vehicles and how do you think um, the public's perspective is going to change in the next five to ten years? I think that electric vehicles are going to become much more mainstream, much more popular with people who are at the moment driving a petrol or a diesel vehicle. There are a couple of reasons for that. The first one is that up till the beginning of this year, the number of credible electric vehicles on the market was really quite limited. So there, weren't, there wasn't a diversity of products there which suited people, no matter what their particular priorities there were. Now? There is, yes, and in fact it's growing more and more. So the second point of that is price as well. So again, with Renault Zoe, that starts at 13995 and that's specifically put in not there... Not allowed to give this sort of information well, you know, and hang fair. in the snack, but we're <laughs> just going to cross the I thought I'd sneak it in. I know. But the, pri the point on pricing there is that from, for the first time, people can choose between a petrol or a diesel or an electric vehicle, and they can choose the one that fits their needs best. They aren't having to make a compromise between those, uh, those different things of price and what the vehicle is that they're actually buying. So we're offering a comparable product at the same price as the, as the competition. So there'll be lo lots more cars to choose from and the price is coming down to a point where people would normally recognise a car to be. Okay, so we have identified that the price will go down. Mm -hmm. um, the public is going to start to be more aware about the selection of mm -hmm. electric vehicles available at the moment and in the future. Um, you said the battery life will change accordingly with what kind of travels you will need to make. What are the implications for the grid to have an incredible amount of new electric vehicles coming and charging points using the grid? Okay, well the first point there is on the battery life. So when we talk about the uh, motorway service stations, we're talking about how fast you can charge a car, so how easy that is to do a long journey. So you go to the motorway services, you charge the car up really quickly while you're having a cup of coffee and then you continue on your way. So that's what we're talking about with, in terms of battery life. When we talk about the grid, it's important just to think about how it's profiled. So most people, when they're charging their car, would actually charge it pretty much like you would charge your mobile phone today. So you go home and you charge it overnight. 
when you look at the way that the grid produces electricity, there's basically there's a huge hole overnight in electricity production. So while there are peaks during the day, those peaks are actually where people are out and about driving their cars. So almost by definition, that isn't when people would be charging. So for many people, the idea of electric vehicles is a great opportunity for the future because it helps to even out demand over a 24 hour period. So it makes the grid easier and more efficient in its running. Who says this? Uh, energy companies, oh, I uh, it's people, just experts. In a, no, 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 it's not just a, no, no, it's not just a Renault view. <laughs> okay. um, but there are there are experts out there who look at it as a real opportunity for helping us to develop more efficient power over a longer period of time, rather than having to deal with these peaks and troughs in in energy demand. Okay. If we want to keep it then on the general conversation, mm -hmm. um, there are also a number of people claiming that electric vehicle could become batteries that could give back the electricity mm -hmm. into the grid while they are completely fully charged. Have you come across anything like this? What is your perspective on this argument? Absolutely, and there are lots of there are lots of studies out there and in fact there are lots of companies who are already developing the software which you could manage that with and so instead of having to ramp up power stations to uh, meet demand in a five minute coffee break in the middle of Coronation Street or whatever <laughs> actually you just either stop the electric vehicles from charging or you take a little bit of power from each of the batteries so not enough that it would affect the range but just take a little bit of power from those um, from those batteries just for that little period of time which then means that you don't have to ramp up and ramp down on the power device on the power delivery from the power stations and actually once again you've got something there which is nice so and you even. actually see this as a feasible solution in order to roll out electric vehicles in the near future oh it's a it's definitely a feasible solution okay. how close it is is anybody's guess we make the cars we don't make the grid okay, but it but is certainly something that there are lots of people who are much cleverer than me looking into at the moment but you are the expert today so oh, I would like I would like to know what is your, your point of view of the future so we have identified very briefly mm -hmm. what the arguments are around electric vehicles uh, what do you think are the implications for the UK market so not not broadly around mm -hmm. but for the British market what is going to happen in the next 10 years so over the next 10 years as I say I see electric vehicles becoming much more mainstream the number of charging points that we have out there which is already a really impressive number will continue to grow as more electric vehicles come onto the market but on top of that I think that people will be faced with a greater diversity of products to choose from so we th see things like hydrogen fuel cell vehicles coming in so much as at the moment we can't say that one car suits everybody or even in fact that one fuel type fit, it suits everybody you can't just say that petrol suits everybody on the market in the future people will just have more vehicles to choose from depending on how they use their vehicle and what kind of journeys they regularly do and what their priorities are from that car. Okay, thank you. Um, now I would like to focus again a bit on the city relationship mm -hmm. with electric vehicles. Um, if we try to focus on the fact that most people living in London, for example, won't need the car on a daily basis for very long journeys, mm -hmm. What is the solution? What do you think, or one of the solutions, mm -hmm. but what do you think is going to happen in the next 12 to 24 months in order to facilitate um, a low carbon economy and in order to reduce the CO2 emission within the city? Well, I think the, the policies that are already out there in terms of um, encouraging um, charge points to be put in really helps because that gives people the confidence and it gives people the grid with which to charge the cars but also programs like eCar Club are essential in that kind of thing because it means that people get behind the wheel people actually experience what the car is like to drive no matter how many facts and figures we give people will be buying with their head um, not their heart if we base it on the figures but actually once you've driven an electric vehicle there are very few people who want to go back because it's very responsive it's very quiet it's very relaxing and all of these things are actually very well um, suited to city driving on top of all of that there are some real gains to be made in terms of emissions and especially in particulates within cities okay. so whereas we talk about co2 for cars in general actually co2 is a global problem and of course we can't we can't do that down but by the same token in cities it's smog it's particulates these are the things that cause breathing difficulties for people these are the things that actually admit people to hospital and of course by having electric vehicles in the city you're not having that kind of pollution produced by the tailpipes of the cars so you're moving away from this model where there's pollution being produced exactly where the people actually are 
Okay, Ben, mm -hmm. so thank you very much for the discussion, but I have one final question. As we touched upon different points, mm -hmm. like charging points, battery life, there is a fundamental other aspect of electric vehicle that is often spoke about in the media, but not really know the answer, and it's the noise. The fact that they are so quiet, electric vehicle, creates problem in the public perception. What do you think about it? Well, once again with Zoe, and apologies for using a <laughs> Renault product as, a, as an example, but Zoe has actually fitted a standard with a pedestrian warning system, so it emits a noise up to 18 miles an hour. Over 18 miles an hour, you're more likely to be on the kinds of roads where people are going to look before they step out. So it's for low speed pedestrian warning. And in fact, it does give a challenge because we don't want to replace the noise of all of the internal combustion engine cars in a city with fake noises from electric vehicles, but you still need something that people turn around and look and, and notice. So it was a real challenge for the engineers, but it is something that's now as standard on Zoe, it's optional on the rest of the range. So we've got, we've got something there to overcome that fear. Well, thank you very much for all of your help. It's nice to know that all of the different problems or uh, obstacles that are actually um, focusing, the people generally focus on with electric vehicles, you're working towards finding <laughs> solutions. We try to. So thank you very much and this is all from Hugging the Snug. Bye.